feel like you have no control over your life? Like someone is pulling your strings for you? Feel like you're someone's puppet? Well, you are. Okay, I'm just joking, but your body does work in a similar way to a marionette. Let me paint you a picture. Your brain is the puppeteer. It comes up with every decision about how each tiny part of your body will work. While the brain is infinitely complex and interesting, it's not our main topic today. What we want to know is how it controls the body. Similar to a marionette, the body is actually controlled by a bunch of string-like structures. However, in contrast to a puppet, these strings are enclosed in the spinal cord, specifically in the white matter, and are called white matter tracks. Let's go back for a moment to the spinal cord and puppeteer's string analogy. If a crazy theatre hater attacked a puppet with a pair of scissors and cut off one of the strings, the puppeteer could no longer move the arm the rope was attached to. Well, the spinal cord works under a very similar principle, but the control is much more fine-tuned, so even a tiny nick on the spinal cord could leave half of your body limp and senseless. Just like the brain, it is complex and beautiful, and the best way to learn about it is to study it in cross-section. Well, I hope you're in the mood to learn because we're about to find out all about the intricacies of the spinal cord cross-section and especially the white matter tracks. You may be thinking the spinal cord sounds like a super complicated structure, but worry not. Throughout this tutorial, we'll break it down for you in a logical, easy to understand way. We'll start with a quick recap of the gross anatomy of the spinal cord. We'll then take a look at a basic view of the spinal cord in cross-section before we move on to the white matter, its anatomical subdivisions, and the bundles of axons called tracks. Throughout this tutorial, we'll address the different functions that all these structures have and the variation of the spinal cord at different spinal levels. We'll finish up with some clinical notes to give you an appreciation of why the function of the white matter tracks is so important. Right, let's get straight into it. In order to better visualise the elements of the white matter and their extent in the body, we'll have a really brief recap of the gross anatomy of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a tubular structure occupying the vertebral canal between the foramen magnum and around L1 to L2 vertebrae. It begins as an elongation of the medulla oblongata of the brain and terminates as a conus medullaris, with loose spinal nerves below it forming the cauda equina. There are two enlargements along the length of the spinal cord, one in the cervical and one in the lumbrosacral region. At each vertebral level, a bilateral pair of nerve roots leaves the spinal cord via rootlets to form the spinal nerves. We'll now take a closer look at the cross-section of the spinal cord because it is full of landmarks and areas important for a good understanding of the white matter of the spinal cord. Let's start with orienting ourselves. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.